The last topic we're going to cover in this unit is the idea of scaling. And so scaling is sort of a useful design idea where what we do is we can design a circuit using simpler values. So for instance, maybe we want to use one ohm, one Henry, one farad values. Uh, and that's going to make things a lot easier than having to deal with microfarads, millihenries, k ohms, stuff like that. And once we've done this design with the simpler values, we can then scale it to transform to more realistic numbers because of course one ohm is very small, one farad is very large. Um, so we use it as a design tool, do the math with easy numbers, and then we scale it to values that are more realistic. So in general, there's two types that we're gonna consider of scaling. One is magnitude scaling, and this is basically we're changing impedances in the circuit but leaving the frequency response the same. And the second one is frequency scaling. And so what we're gonna see is you can also do a combination of the both. Uh, of magnitude and frequency scaling at the same time, so that's sort of the most general case. So over the next few short videos, we're gonna take a look at these ideas, and then we will end the unit with an example to kind of show how we can use this idea and how it's really a very useful design technique. So throughout the next few videos, I'm gonna be talking about primed and unprimed values. For instance, I'll have an R primed and an R, and so the R primed is going to be new value after scaling, and the unprimed is going to be the old original value before the scaling. So let's start by looking at our magnitude scaling. So what our magnitude scaling is going to do is, as I said briefly earlier, it's going to increase or decrease all the impedances in the network by some factor, which we're gonna call k sub m, but it's going to leave the frequency response unchanged. So we're gonna have the same bandwidth, same resonant frequency, same quality factor, as we're gonna show a little later on. So let's start by looking at our general equation for impedances. So general Z equations. So we have sort of three elements that we're considering here. We have our impedance for our resistor is R. Our impedance for our inductor is J omega L, and our impedance for our capacitor is one over J omega C. And so what we wanna do is multiply each of these impedances by some factor to increase or decrease the impedance. So this, this factor we're gonna multiply isn't limited to being greater than one. So let's say we multiply, we'll call this factor Km. Sorry. Um, so we're going to multiply each impedance by Km factor. Keeping in mind, we don't want any change to frequency. So we want no change to our frequency. So what we have then is let's consider our three impedances. So we have Z sub R primed. Our new impedance is going to be Km times Z sub R. And our Z sub R we said was just R, so we have Km R. And so in this case, uh, we're not really concerned with, uh, we don't have any frequency dependence on R, so we don't have to worry about any type of compensation. So this is just equal to our R prime value. So let's look now at our inductor. So our new impedance for our inductor is going to be J omega times Km L. Uh, well, sorry, let me take a step back and let's say we're multiplying the impedance by Km. So we have Km times ZL. And so plugging in for our ZL, we then have Km, so J omega Km times L, but remember we don't want to be adjusting the frequency, so we want no change to frequency. So what we say is that then this must equal to J omega times some L primed. So we've adjusted the, the uh, inductance value. So similar thing with our capacitance, we can say ZC primed is equal to Km times ZC. So that's going to be equal to uh, we can put the Km in the numerator, but then we drop it down and we can write it as J omega C divided by Km. 
So we get something like that. But again, we don't want to be adjusting our, our frequency. So we say this is 1 over j omega times c primed. So comparing all of these things, we can sort of write what our r primed, l primed, and c, par, c primed are by comparing to these two impedance equations. So let's write what those are. So we see for our r primed, this is just going to be kmr. For our impedance, we have l primed is equal to km times l. And so these are just coming from inspection here. So here our L primed is equal to Km times L. For our capacitance, C primed, we have it's equal to C divided by K sub M. And then by design, our new frequency omega prime is the same as our old frequency omega. So our capacitance, let me just point out, came from here. And then as we designed, we have no change in frequency. So these would be our key equations for our magnitude scaling. And of course, we choose what value we want for this Km uh, in terms of how we want to adjust these impedances. And then we can adjust our resistor, inductor, and capacitor values accordingly. So one thing to note is let's consider our new resonant frequency. So that's going to be 1 over the square root of L prime C prime. And if we plug in those values, we have 1 over the square root for L primed, it's Km times L. For C primed, it's C over Km. So we see that our two Kms are canceling out, and we get that our resonant frequency is just one over root Lc, which was the equation for our, our original resonant frequency. So as designed, we see that this is unchanged. Uh, we could also note that we could see the same thing we would see no change for our bandwidth or our quality factor for this case of magnitude scaling.